Good afternoon, Red Deer. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us for an update with respect to the city of Red Deer's local COVID-19 response to the pandemic and the new normal that we find ourselves navigating in together. I hope that you're all having the best week that you possibly can have given our circumstances and that you're able to take some time to get outside and enjoy the spring weather uh, in the way that we're all able to these days. The City of Red Deer and our Emergency Operations Center staff continue to work hard to keep our residents safe and informed during COVID-19. Earlier this week, you'll have likely have noted in the local media that we have already declared a renewed state of local emergency as part of our municipal response. The City of Red Deer must renew this every seven days in order to maintain the level of our pandemic response. We've fielded a number of questions from citizens about why it's important to continue with the state of local emergency, particularly because pandemics and the pandemic is, is proving to be uh, longer. We must uh, renew this every seven days and a state of local emergency helps the city in a couple of key areas. It helps municipalities all across the province attain access to additional resources if necessary in order to help facilitate our local response. It helps us coordinate our regional response. Uh, and I will note that many re uh, regional mun municipalities throughout our region have, have declared their own states of local emergency uh, because we recognize uh, that the central zone region that we all share uh, the central, the Red Deer Regional Hospital. A state of local emergency allows us to make decisions as quickly as possible to be consistent in our communication with our citizens. Uh, I mentioned that it also gives the city access to additional resources uh, under the emergency management. So for example, if we needed additional personnel from other orders of government, if required. And I will note that currently in of Alberta, uh, and our city manager will speak more to this, uh, but I believe that there are approximately 60 other states of local emergency. And usually what we're seeing in the province uh, is the metro centers, as well as mid-sized cities uh, and regional hub communities. Uh, cities with higher populations are generally in states of local emergency. It is also important that uh, we may do this to preserve the swiftness of our decision-making authority. So a great example was when, for example, we set up the temporary shelter to allow vulnerable citizens to be able to physically distance. It was a great example of a project that normally wouldn't, would have taken about six months for it to come through completion by the time it went through all of the processes. Our emergency operations team was able to partner with the community and get that task done within five days. And so there are examples, uh, a great example would be uh, if, if the hospital or if the government needed other secondary options in the community, then our city would be able to quickly respond to that. Uh, so of course, uh, right now, I just would like to make note of the fact, uh, we're very proud of the fact that cases are low in Red Deer, uh, and, and we're, we're very proud of our local response and certainly proud of our citizens in all of the efforts that you have done uh, to be diligent and to take precautions. However, it's absolutely imperative uh, that we continue to do our part to flatten the curve in central Alberta. Uh, there's many examples of communities, uh, certainly in, in Alberta there's recent cases, but across the country and internationally, who thought that they had it under control, uh, dialed back some of their uh, restrictions early, uh, and then found themselves uh, in a precarious situation. So the City of Red Deer will continue to work closely with the provincial government and Alberta Health Services to ensure that our community response is in alignment with the recommendations from Alberta's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Hinshaw. I would like to just also uh, briefly touch uh, base on public information. So there's many ways, uh, and we really are endeavoring to get our citizens all the information that you need to help successfully help your uh, yourselves and your loved ones and your businesses uh, navigate through the pandemic in the coming weeks. You can still access City of Red Tier information online, on social media, certainly our local media have been great partners in getting information out there, and the call center remains open at 342-8111. Another means of information for those of you who are on the Notify Red Deer program 
If you go into your Notify Red Deer account and click COVID-19, you can make a choice if you would like uh, to receive information from emergency operations by email or by SMS text. Uh, but I will just note, you actually have to go in and click that for you to be able to receive those inf that information. So again, uh, as we're experiencing warmer temperatures, we're fielding a lot of questions. Parks, uh, open park spaces, trails, as well as dog parks do remain open. Our public is welcome to use them, uh, provided we all engage in the physical distancing measures that are in place. Uh, that means approximately two meters, uh, away from each other and avoid touching uh, the hard surfaces such as handrail, handrails uh, and washing our hands often. Uh, so with that, uh, I just want to thank Red Deerians. I'm going to turn it over shortly to our city manager, Alan Seabrook. Again, want to conclude by thanking our citizens for all that you're doing to, to support uh, your loved ones and your neighbors in this. Uh, and we will stay on course as a city uh, we will get through this together. We'll follow the directions of Dr. Henshaw, uh, and I have no doubt that we'll come through this stronger and that we will stay, a, not only flatten the curve in our province and our country, uh, but our goal is really to stay ahead of the curve as a city. And so thank you, take care uh, to you and all your loved ones. And with that, I'd like to invite City Manager Ellen Seabrook forward. He'll brief you a little bit more about the state of local emergency and provide some other information for today. Thank you, everyone. So thank you, Mayor Veer, and good afternoon, Red Deer. I'm Alan Seabrook, City Manager here at the City of Red Deer. I'm glad to have the opportunity to speak to you this evening and to provide an update on our municipal response to COVID-19. I want to say a heartfelt thanks to all of you who continue to do your part to prevent the spread of this virus by keeping your distance from others when in public, self-isolating when you're ill, washing your hands, and staying home whenever you can. We're well into the second month of physical distancing and following public health orders. These are so important so that we can keep things in check. The sun is out, thankfully, we've waited long for this time to be here. It's warming up and we know it's tempting for you to take your children out to the playgrounds and to shoot some hoops at the park. We've received a few reports of people playing basketball and using our baseball diamonds. And I must stress to you, this cannot happen. The facilities do remain closed, along with the playground structures and the outside, the outdoor gyms. We've come so far these past weeks in limiting the spread of this virus here in Red Deer, and we don't want to let up now so that this pandemic can take a grip on us. This is not the time for us to take the foot off the gas, and we need you to stay vigilant as we have done over the previous months. If you see an individual or a business that is violating the provincial health, health orders and you believe the safety of others is at risk, we urge, we urge you to submit a claim to Alberta Health Services. The link is posted on our website at reddeer.ca. As the mayor mentioned, this week we declared a renewed state of local emergency known as a soul. It gives us the ability to make decisions and to take all necessary steps to ensure the continued safety of our residents. It can include things like the distribution of essential supplies, coordination of emergency medical services, or access to extra personnel from other orders of government if we need them. I've recommended to Council and the Emergency Advisory Committee that we continue to renew the state of local emergency and that it remain in place for the duration of this event until such time as we've received direction from Alberta Health Services and the Chief Medical Officer, Hinshaw, that it's safe to lift it. I also want to talk to you this afternoon about the potential for flooding in our city. We've seen some of our creeks and streams that have been overflowing the past few days due to the rapid melting caused by the warm weather. If you're out using our parks and trails, we would ask residents to keep a safe distance from all of the creeks and streams. Don't walk or let your pets walk on any ice covered bodies of water. Although the ice may look thick and it may look safe, this can be deceiving and we don't want to risk any danger to people or your pets of falling through the ice. If you see flooding, you can report it to our call center. 
It's in operation from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., Monday to Friday. And the number to call is 403-342-8111. All the latest health information and statistics on COVID-19 are available on the Government of Alberta website at alberta.ca backslash COVID. And for local information about our municipal response, including any event cancellations, facility closures, and details about your property tax and utility deferrals, you can go to reddeer.ca backslash COVID-19. Thank you for taking care of each other and especially looking out for your friends and neighbors during these challenging times. We say it often and we'll continue to say it. We really are better together, even though we do have to stay apart. So thank you and thanks for joining in this evening.